it's Anne. Today we are going to look in on my red wigglers in my worm tower and I'm going to take you step by step and show you how long you can expect to wait for worm castings in a setup like mine with similar inputs. Let's look at the bin and I'll talk about how we got to this point. So this particular tray that is on the top right now is 133 days old. It is actually the first tray that I added just paper to on the bottom when I first started this bin. So if you have a similar bin to this, let me know, do you run this the same way or do you run it completely different down in the comments below? I started this system in a really unconventional way. I had a DIY bin that was starting to break, so I needed to get a new home for the Red Wigglers. So I bought this tower system, but I didn't start it brand new. I started it with the already existing castings and food and worms. Now those old bins comprised four layers of this new system. And then I put in two layers of just dry bedding or prepared bedding. So this one here is actually what used to be the prepared bedding from the very first video that I did on this system. So I have harvested all the rest of the former DIY castings and uh, so now we're up to the, the end as it would be. So what we're doing now is we're going to have a look and see what we've got going on here other than some sprouting. So as you can see today, this layer is almost ready to harvest. So I'm kind of looking in here to see what we've got and I'm trying to decide, should I harvest this today? Is it ready? Or should I give it one more cycle and um, I'm looking at this and I had planned on letting it go for another cycle, but this really does look like it's ready to roll. Now there's these little pieces of paper that haven't digested for whatever reason. So um, I don't know, looking at this, it seems like it's dried off quite a bit and I think I can actually get a harvest out of this today. Uh, I hadn't actually planned on doing that, but these guys have done a wonderful job of finishing this up. And so this particular tray is ready to roll and we're just gonna use the aggravation method to give them the idea that it would be a good idea to get down to that layer below that was fed. This layer wasn't fed last time, so it has no leftover food and the worms should in theory want to go down to that layer below that was fed last time. And they got some really yummy zucchini last time, so I don't know why we still have the hangers on up here, but we do. So I am going to let these guys drive down into the layer below, and I'll bring you back when I can do a bit of a harvest. Yep, saw that at the last minute. Okay, come back in five minutes again. And the impatient worm farmer is uh, gonna speed along any of these little critters that have not gone already. Kind of looking to see if there's any big ones out here that I can grab. Oop, there you go. And then I will just dump this into a bucket. So it looks like I only got about one gallon-ish of castings. But in my mind, that's not bad at all. Okay, so now this layer, as being the layer that was directly below, is now going to become the pre-harvest tray. It's going to be on top, so it is not going to need these little risers, which are helping distribute the weight of all the castings and the worms above. So I'm gonna pull them out because this guy here is not going to need them. So it looks like we've got more, looks like all the worms did their job and came through. And there's a little bit of food left, which I'll, I'm gonna pick out. And we will add that to the feeding layer today. So that's all I'm seeing for big food. I don't, this has got to be the zucchini that's sprouting here. 
So there's a little bit of paper, I can see just a tiny bit of paper, and in the three or four weeks that it will take me to get back into this bin, I am sure they're going to have that all finished up. But just in case it's not tasty enough for them, I am gonna go ahead and give these guys some worm chow. Now this is just the exact same stuff that I was feeding Blue over in uh, the 55 gallon worm bin, which was just leftover CC dry goods. And what I thought were coffee beans were actually chocolate beans. When I started grinding this up in the coffee grinder, I could smell chocolate, so um, yeah. So there, it smells really nice. It smells like hot, hot cocoa. It's rice and chocolate and uh, I don't remember what else was in there. I'm just gonna scruff that in the top and then let me get the next tray below so that we can get these guys fed up. Okay, here we are at the, the next layer down. So this layer was created on October 8th, and that was the one that I lost the footage from it. So unfortunately you didn't get to see me make this particular one, but you can tell since October, there's a lot of worms down here and a lot of castings, but they've never been fed any people food or scraps. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make a nice trench here, and then I'm gonna drop in some food. A lot of this food here is really long-term. The uh, pineapple, that'll be in there for six months. So when we go to harvest this, um, you know, they'll eat the peas and the tea and, and all of that, but the a lot of the pineapple is probably gonna be in here for six months. And it looks like there might be mashed potatoes in here as well. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna feed them that. And that should keep them happy for the next month or two until it's this turn to be harvested. Let's look at the layer below, which was created, which was created November 5th. So this started as just uh, paper, cardboard and paper, and you can tell it's still pretty dry. And that's fine because we're not trying to, to do anything with this. I'm just kind of fluffing this up a little bit. And uh, we've got our little helpers here to keep everything, the weight distributed evenly to try and take it easy on the plastic so this system lasts as long as possible. And then the last time we were in here, this is the one that we did. There's very few worms down here at all. The paper is still pretty dry. And I think this was missing some uh, risers last time. So I'm gonna put the risers in there because this is the absolute bottom layer. And you can tell this is all shredded paper and cardboard. Not sure if I put any worm chow in there, or I'm not sure if I put any of the, I'm not sure if I put any eggshell in there, but I am going to, because since I'm not feeding my normal prepared bedding, they won't get um, the grit if I don't. Let me go check and look and see what the sump is doing. Only a handful of worms, and I'm gonna put them into the feeding tray. Okay, so here we go reassembling things. So now this is the December 3rd, layer. It's going there. This is the October 8th layer that we just fed. This is the new pre-harvest tray and here is my brand new inoculating tray that's going to go on the bottom. Okay, well, that's it for the tower today. If you want to buy a tower like this, I will put it in the pinned comments below. It is an Amazon link that I do get a small commission from, but the price to you is still the same. And also, if you want to see more of the tower, there is a playlist right over here. And if you're just interested in red wigglers in general, I have a playlist for that over there. And YouTube says, if you've seen all of that, you will want to watch this video down here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.